Hollywood Alex, another episode of 6300. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Continue to show love also on LA Sports Report. A lot of great stuff continuing to go on there on all platforms. Excited to continue to build that up as things go along. We're here today, excited. Another week of LA Lakers basketball has gone down. And I just love what I've been seeing so far, at least in the last week. We talked last weekend, right before this stretch they went on. Not sure if they're going to go two and two. Not sure if they're going to go two and one. We're going to show how things are going to play out. They've been playing well this last week. I really turned up as we get closer and closer to the trade deadline. Uh, and folks are now confused a little bit about what the Lakers squad is going to do next. There's a lot of rumors about what we're going to do. There was a loud noise about making moves and all of that. But uh, they started to play well. Uh, that noise, people now, has been from clear demands to what's the truth. So I'll toss that to you, Alec. Looking at how the team has played in the last week, uh, do you think the Lakers need to trade or not with how they've been playing? Yeah, well, first we'll start off with those last four games. They they did go two and two, as we said they would. Right. Uh, but, the, but these last two have been very positive. So I think that's in terms of how Lakers Nation kind of reacts to games and, and uh, regular season games throughout the season, it, it can be very doom and gloom. So seeing those positive games, especially that blowout over the Mavericks, um, has Lakers fans feeling a, a little bit better, uh, especially about individual pieces like D'Angelo. Correct. Um, who was inserted back into the starting lineup uh, in that Utah Jazz game and has remains in that lineup uh, for the, these uh, past three games. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems that this team has found a, a bit more uh, of their rhythm uh, and, and have a good chemistry with that that unit with him in the starting lineup. So right. um, in terms of whether they still need a trade or not, yes, uh, because ultimately this is still – very similar to the team that they had last year where they were able to make it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, and, and I think with this team as currently constructed, they could potentially get back there too. Uh, might be a bit of a dogfight though. Uh, and, and we'll talk about a couple of the teams that might be ahead of them. But I think in order to be a championship team, they still need to make a trade. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my answer is definitely a resounding yes to that question. Um, I definitely do hear that. I definitely think we need a trade. I guess in reaction, uh, while I do agree with you, uh, just the news has shifted in the last week as well. There was a lot of talk about DeJounte Murray, and that, that's trade still on the table. I saw there was a rumor trade for D'Lo where it was like Deontay uh, from the Hawks to L.A. for the for uh, D'Angelo, uh, JHS, and like a second-round pick or something like that, uh, which I may have been denied, I believe, as obviously we still have D'Lo on the roster right now. Oh, there have been rumors about a potential D'Lo trade uh, in that regard, uh, yep. but on more – I guess louder front recently, we've seen news about potentially a Colin Sexton, a Tyus Jones now. Went from these big name guys who were shooting for the moon with Zach Levine and DeJounte, as we mentioned, and now it's guys of this nature who are not bad themselves, but uh, I don't don't have the same pull, I guess name wise at least, as other guys we at first had on the table. So uh, would any of these guys make that help us make that jump, or you think we need to shoot higher as we originally were? Um, I mean. Tyus specifically, I, I think, is most productive like as uh, a point guard and distributor. So like, I don't know that like next to LeBron, that's something that we necessarily need uh, sure. at this point. Because um, he, he's known for being a great playmaker and having a great assist to turnover ratio. But that that those skills that he brings, I, I don't think that are necessarily um, like the biggest compliments to what we need right now. Sure. Um, Sexton has been playing really great basketball for Utah and probably deserves a starting spot uh, somewhere. It's a, it's a nice slam on uh, Shea and Chat and give a night. He, he, he was open, yeah. So salute. He did. He had, he had a great highlight dunk there. Um, but I, he's been rumored in, in Lakers talks before. I think maybe last season. Um, mm -hmm. I think he could be a, a helpful piece. I don't. I don't know necessarily that that is the championship move either, like the checkmate move that we've kind of talked about in, in past. But mm -hmm. I do think that he could, I mean, cause he's, he's like a feisty defender uh, on the perimeter uh, and, and he can create his own shot and create for others as well. Um, so I, I think between these two, I, I'd probably prefer Sexton, uh, right. but I do think going the three and D route uh, and in terms of getting more shooting and fit uh, alongside of uh, LeBron and AD is, is still mm -hmm. the best way to go. And if they do go for the bigger fish, uh, DeJounte, fit-wise, I think still makes the most sense. But he's been rumored for multiple teams, of, of okay. course. And 
I think Miami talks have heated up as Miami is looking to make a deal as well. Yeah, too. I was in the mix recently, I guess. And that, I'm sure that's smoke just to make somebody else up their offer. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, folks are, are pushing hard for DeJounte right now. I seem like his time in Atlanta is wrapping up. Just ironically, had a nice buzzer beater against somebody mm -hmm. days ago. So going out with the bang at least and even then with a, a good memory. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what moves are made. And yeah, I do agree with you in that. Uh, Sexton would be a good option if we have to make if there if there's a move like that on the table potentially. Uh, I don't think also it wouldn't be one for one. We may also get another piece in that, which could yeah. be helpful. Um, so seeing what all could come alongside him as well, uh, I do think that that could work out. So yeah, again, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Interesting to see how that how that goes. Um, also to that, taking a step back, um, as we said, the Lakers are click, starting to click right now and could work things out. Um, as we look at things and who they may be going up against, um, just who do you look at as the top teams in the West right now? Even, I mean, you look at the standings sure. and with that, like who, 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 who are we making the trade to beat? Like, do you think mm -hmm. we can't beat uh, any of these teams with the rush we have now and what player that we get uh, could help us get past one of these top teams? If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the two teams have gotten their wins against the last two games, the, the Thunder and the Mavericks. I, I don't, necessarily worry about them uh, the thunder have been great this season i just their youth I, I i think they're probably a year away from being like a championship contender but they're gonna be they're gonna be feisty in the playoffs for sure Correct. uh the timberwolves been great most of the season like they figured out the chemistry with rudy gobert offensively and defensively uh they still gotta prove it to me though not to say that they're not a great team but they gotta prove it in the playoffs because they've yet to do that um and I think with LeBron and AD, there's a certain level of confidence that you have there, despite some of the uh, waffling that they may do during the regular season. Mm -hmm. There's a level of play that you expect uh, to happen uh, come come playoff time. Uh, AD's been sensational all season, uh, by the way, too. But you expect LeBron to kind of kick yeah. it up to another gear as well. Um, so there's only a couple teams. The Nuggets, uh, who are still my Western Conference favorite, probably championship favorite. Mm -hmm. um, the Clippers on paper, but they also are in a prove it situation. Like I said to to the Timberwolves, Better than um, I, I think they're a bad matchup for the Lakers uh, if they're completely healthy. Mm -hmm. But they still, we've seen the shortcomings of Harden and, and guys like that uh, come crunch time. So they still are in a prove it scenario. But I think that's a team that the Lakers should be concerned about. Mm -hmm. um, beyond those two, can you pull up the standings again. Beyond those two, I don't think the Lakers should necessarily like fear anyone. I, I think mm -hmm. every other team is beatable. It is a team that they would beat in a seven game series. Got it. Uh, and for those top teams that you mentioned that could be a real threat to us, again, to our trade questions and all of that, uh, would adding a Levine get us over the hump of those squads? Would adding a DeJounte get us over the hump of those squads? Or you still think we'd be uh, behind a bit uh, in, in that race? See, I think adding Levine is almost like the Suns adding Bradley Beal. Like you're adding a, a really good offensive talent at the two as mm -hmm. well, ironically, but I don't think that necessarily puts you over the top. Like they both have their, their defensive shortcomings. They both aren't great playmakers. They can play make, uh, but it's more so than out for themselves. go for it. Watch uh, it. It's just saying health wise, if he's going to be out for another two weeks, I think it is. So yeah, both have injury concerns. So I don't think understand that. So. Too. Yeah. So it, it's, I see it very analogous to a Bradley Beal type move where people are going to be like, Oh man, like they got three superstar offensive talents mm -hmm. now, but you see the shortcomings there with the, that, trio as well too so um it, it might be more like cosmetically pleasing for people but i i don't think zach levine like automatically makes them the favorite in the west Got it. yeah Got it. yeah I, I agree with that as well it's, it's more it's more fan service at that point and mm -hmm. i think it actually is for the team i think they still say at some of the same level uh with with uh guy like levine in, in the building instead of uh the package we may, we may send out so uh yeah we'll see how, how that plays out uh the last question that i had in regards to the lakers was if the team does stay together um how much faith do you have that they, we can continue what we've been playing at least the last couple couple of days mm -hmm. and we continue that on throughout the rest of the season yeah just in terms of the, the consistency of finishing out the regular season yeah do you think we can make a real push with this team as constructed you think i we already, already discussed it but just what faith would you have if we didn't make a move at the deadline yeah, if they continue with this, as it seems that 
Ham is starting to shorten the rotation a little bit or at least figure out uh, the combinations of guys he wants to have at the floor at, at, at certain points in the game. Sure. That's great to see. Uh, D'Lo playing confidently and, and more freely on offense is great. So, like, if they were to keep him past the trade deadline, I think they'd be great for the regular season. I just mm-hmm. think there'd be a ceiling on this team in the playoffs. Uh, right. That that is probably Western Conference Finals. Um, but yeah, I I think as currently constructed, they would finish out this season strongly. Maybe not getting to the top four seed that I initially envisioned them because the West is so loaded in a bloodbath. But right. I think somewhere in that five to eight range, uh, they'd probably be finishing out the season. Uh, and, and would still be a very dangerous team, even if they are between five and eight. Yeah, I think we could finish there, and then as we did last year, still make a run. Uh, also, I think as we are starting to see, uh, I'm, I'm scared to say it, and it's sad that I'm scared to say it, but it is yeah. what it is. I'm getting faith in Anthony Davis right now. Yeah. And that shouldn't be a hesitant thing to say, but yeah. we have seen how that has happened in the past where you finally get faith in him, and then all of a sudden it kind of falls off. Up, yeah. but, uh, I really enjoy what he's been doing so far. As yeah. you pointed out last episode, one, make sure we give him this praise. Right. We're loud. Everybody's loud when he's playing bad. We want to be loud when he's playing well as well. I right. think this is what he's doing. And folks start starting to talk about finally passing the torch and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's been great yeah. to see how he is turning up this year uh, and shot silence all the naysayers, uh, which is a, a joke now beyond. <laughs> yeah. well, literally, literally the naysayers. Come around, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely so thankful for what he is doing. And uh, I think if he is playing like this, that we can uh, upset a few squads that we viewed highly uh, going into a postseason. So we're sure to talk about it more as things go along. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely, we'll be back next week again to talk about things as it plays out. Uh, to that point, as we do each week, the last one with the Lakers is just looking at the schedule. We play the next tonight uh, and shortly in like an hour. Yeah. Uh, we play then the Blazers, uh, the Clippers on Tuesday, uh, the Bulls on Thursday. And then by this time next week, we'll be back before the Warriors game on Saturday. So for the next four, how do you see the next four games playing out? Yeah, real quick, just to the Anthony Davis point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think he's he's been sensational. I, had the Lakers had five more wins or so, I think he's in the MVP conversation. Uh, yeah. they're, they're a little bit too low for that right now, but. There's people who say nay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll put you up at some point. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, AD's been the most consistent Laker. He's been a dominant force on both sides of the ball, and, and it's been great to see. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, if he maintains uh, his health, he's going to be an MVP caliber player. Um, yeah. In regards to these next four, we talk about how the Lakers can trick off games at times. When I look at these four games, they should for sure go three and one. They should beat the Nets, Blazers, and Bulls, and the Clippers could be a toss-up. Correct. Um, I think they trick off one of, like, the Nets or Bulls, probably the Bulls. Mm. So I, I'm going to say two and two, but, like, they should go three and one. If Levine was back, actually, no. We, we might, to, to Matt, to our joke about Matt, we might we might see a all-star Kobe White performance versus the right. Lakers Next Thursday, we'll see. But uh, no, I, I was confident to say we go three and one. Um, okay. yeah, I guess I'm buying into what I saw the last couple of days, which you talked about with Darvin finally getting the lineups back uh, mm-hmm. and getting that uh, lineup that we had in, in play that got us 2 1 Trevor final, uh, mm-hmm. maintaining that for a little bit longer than, than usual. Uh, and and D Lo and Reeves and these guys continue to step up as, they, as they've been. I think mm-hmm. we can get three wins this week. And if we lose to the Clippers, that's just how things have gone in the past. We'll hold that L. Uh, mm-hmm. But we know how with Matt's most at the end. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that plays out, but sure we'll be talking about it all as things go along. So, uh, yeah, leaning forward to it. Any last comment on uh, the Lakers before we move on? Uh, no, nah, not about the Lakers, just the, the White brothers between Kobe White and Derek White. Mike, Mike begins. Oh, yeah. to start here. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even going to do that right now. But <laughs> we're looking forward to what, what's on the way with the Lakers. Again, continue to follow us on LA Sports Support. A lot of good conversation going on there. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about the Lakers this week. So, uh, good stuff on that front.